right. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to be here today with Sarah Lohman. And um, Sarah, I know we're going to get into, you know, we have lots of topics we can talk about, but women's health, um, hormonal health. Um, anyways, but what I'd love to hear from you is just uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, who you can help and how you got there. And I know that that's <laughs> a lot of questions all in one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, yes, thank you for those questions. And I, we certainly will dive into everything. Um, I just like real fast want to say thank you so much for inviting me. Yes. I know this is the first time we met. It's I just love your vibe. You have such a, a kind, thank loving you. energy. So thank you for this opportunity to um, share my story with you and your audience. And thank you guys for listening. My name is Coach Sarah Joy, and I have such a juicy story. Okay, so grab your organic popcorn and let's dive in. <laughs> Hi, everyone. So let me take you back to where my health crisis began, which was, I literally know the date. It was September 29th, 2008. And I know that because I can Google it because it was, it was directly correlated to the 2008 crash. And I, if you guys are my age, which I'm turning 44 in a week, yeah. Um, you remember that day it was all over the news. Like the stock market went down. It was bad, right? The yeah. infamous 2008 crash. Oh, yes. Yep. Yep. So at that time, I'd been married for seven years and my son was four years old. So basically, like anything and everything that could go wrong in that crash and then some happened to me and my family. So it started, if you guys remember, it hit the, the crash hit the construction industry really, really hard. And my husband at the time was repairing hydraulic hoses on heavy equipment. So the first domino that fell was he got laid off in round three, right? Because remember yep. all the layoffs? Yep. So oh, yeah. I was actually, I was laid off for my, my first job back then as well. Yep. 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 So I remember know. it well as well. Yeah. Yep. You're like going to be flashing back with me to your life. Yep. So I was working as a full-time receiving manager for the, for a major retail alcohol company at the time. And one of the things that these the evil maharajas, I call them, what they did is they started taking away all of our, all of our benefits. And I'd been management for years. We'd all been management for years. And like all of a sudden I was forced from full-time to part-time. They took all my bennies away and they gave me a, a little letter and was like, you need to sign this letter that you're going to keep working 25 hours a week, no bennies or bye. And yeah. it was like, oh my gosh. So my husband's income was like, whoosh, my income was cut in half. And it was just, just that alone was like a massive whirlwind. So yeah, after losing our two main streams of income and benefits, most of the guys in my whole neighborhood were let go too, because they were also blue collar, like construction guys. And I must have missed the memo from my husband that while he was going to be enjoying his unemployment, that he... Uh, was going to be drunk from, from sun up to some sundown with all the guys in the neighborhood, like easy ups on my driveway, Coors Light, 24 packs everywhere. And that he oh. also had made the decision that he was going to start sleeping around with all of the girls in my neighborhood. So <laughs> I, you know, had caught on really quickly to his like shady, sneaky stuff and figured out he was talking to two specific other girls. So as if those three hits weren't bad enough, I woke up one day to a note taped to my front door that our house was going up for auction and that my landlord had decided to stop paying the mortgage during the crash. And it, he just forgot to tell us, you know, and we were still paying rent and mm. uh, he was letting the house go and basically stealing from us. That's the way I look at it. Um, wow. So between, so between an affair, losing my house, um, and my house going up for auction. I basically had a pack. I packed my whole house. I called like all these friends from church and I was like, Hey, can you help me move my whole house into a storage unit? And they're like, yeah. So they came over with their horse trailers, desert trailers, everything. And we moved out in like a couple of hours. And I moved across town to my in-laws house with my son. But my husband chose not to come with us because he was still living in La La Party Land. And he ended up like deciding to get an apartment with one of these girls. Mm -hmm. So a few months after all of this, my older brother was 
going through a really hard time. He just lost his scholarship and he was like dead set on being an NBA player. He was a six, eight basketball beast mm -hmm. and he lost his scholarship and came home and just went like off the charts, like into drugs and alcohol, probably I'm assuming from the depression of all of it. And he started making a lot of stupid mistakes and ended up getting himself sentenced to 10 years in prison. And then I was like suddenly the advocate to his life and like his support and lifeline. So in the middle of all of these crises, I started losing clumps of hair. You know, when we're straightening our hair and it's just like handfuls and you're like, holy crap, what is happening? Yep. It was just like that. So yep. also, if you guys have ever been through something really, really like stressful in, you li in your life, you know that your appetite gets suppressed. Like it's a natural fight or flight uh, defense mechanism that our bodies have. So my appetite was so suppressed. All I could eat, I, literally all I could stomach was Cliff Bars, ZBS sodas, and Starbucks smoothies. So yeah. from everything, I lost 35 pounds and I'm just naturally like really tall and skinny. I'm five foot nine and like 130 pounds, like just naturally. So me losing 35 pounds was like, scary gross skinny right and not like not pretty so yeah. I was getting made fun of for that and I was still just going through all of this shit with my my husband living with another girl trying to tell me he wants me back me having all of my hair falling out and I couldn't sleep I was a walking zombie from all of this heartbreak of everything so I basically just cried myself to death like literally all day all night like the only way I made it through my work day is I would have my headphones in, I was listening to Seven Dust, some sort of rage metal band to like drown out my own thoughts and try to not bawl my eyes out all day long. And it was, it was just literally hell. Mm. So I came to this conclusion of like, okay, something has to change. Either I got to file for divorce or I got to get this fucker back, right? So I was like, okay, I started thinking about like, well, if I filed for divorce, right? Cause he, my husband was just in this like crazy, like, I want to have sex with everyone. I want to like do all these drugs and like sleep with everyone. And I'm thinking like, holy crap, if I divorce this guy, he's going to get like half custody of my little four-year-old. And what is my four-year-old going to be subjected to? So I made this conscious decision to like sacrifice my own happiness to, to, to stay with him, to like protect my son from that right yep. and it was a really I knew it it was almost like this self-betrayal that mm -hmm. I knew I had to do as a mother but it mm -hmm. was like uh it was what's best for my son so it was like an easy decision even though I knew I was gonna hurt myself right so I'm sitting here now trying to get my husband back who I didn't even want and he's like okay well I'll come be back with you if you buy me a two thousand dollar toolbox and I was like, oh my God. So I bought him his toolbox and he moved in with us. And mm -hmm. so I'm thinking like, okay, cool. Everything's going to like come back to a little bit of normalcy. But during this downtime was when I had all of my sudden onset of symptoms, like yep. crazy symptoms. Like my forearms suddenly had all these, these pains, like weird pains, sharp, sharp pains. I couldn't sleep. There was affecting my ability to work. I had like the same pains in my kneecaps and my calves. And it just was two weeks straight of pain. I'm like trying to type on my computer at work with like cold packs on my arms. And yeah. it just, those just like went away. And then all of a sudden like that fatigue and mm -hmm. anyone that has chronic fatigue, you know what I mean? It's not like a, Oh, I, I just need to get a good night's rest fatigue. It's like, I can't fucking move fatigue. It's like my body feels like concrete, like dead weights fatigue. Yep. Like what is wrong with me? I'm dying. Okay. Um, and so since I had, I started getting really scared for myself. So since I had no more medical benefits and I really did think I was just overworking myself because I was lifting really heavy cases of like wine and champagne all the time, down stocking pallets and all the things I had to do as a receiver. So I went to my manager, who was um, also my best friend at the time. And I was like, hey, can you workman's comp me to the urgent care? And she was like, okay. So I go I go at like six o'clock after my shift one night. And I, I will never forget this. Everyone, anyone that's been diagnosed with anything, they never forget these moments, right? So I'm sitting on the crunchy paper. That's what I call it. 
And the doctor comes in, he sits down, crosses his legs. He's just like looking at my chart, most nonchalant, just like dick attitude. And he's like, what's going on? And I was like, well, I have all these pains and da, 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 da. And he's like, well, I'm going to, I'm going to check your thyroid. And I remember I was like, what? <laughs> like, okay. So he sends me down the hall. I have the worst, most painful blood draw I ever experienced in my life, which then set the stage for anxiety and panic attacks at every one of my blood draws for the next 10 years. And mm -hmm. 30 minutes later, he's like, well, okay, TSH is like a seven. It was like a seven something. He's like, so you have low thyroid function, follow up with your primary in the morning so you can get some meds. All right, have a nice night, bye. And I was like, wait, well, it was like the slow motion. This is how I remember What's it. What does this it mean? Like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, do you remember that? Okay, think of the movie Sandlot, right? Like the police officer, the movie Sandlot, where it was like forever, like slow motion, right? That's how it, I went into shock, which I now know what that is, right? And I started feeling like, his sentence was slow-mo, you have hypo, you know, and I went into shock. So he walks out and I'm just sitting there dumbfounded, which no one should ever go to a doctor's appointment alone. I think we all need advocates at our doctor's appointments because you never know we're going to hit you with some shit like this, right? Well, especially with the, it's with the chronic stuff, if it's not like routine and you're trying to figure it out, it's such yeah. a journey trying to figure out like, yes, it's, it's a journey and uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And having so, at least questions prepared on paper or like something, but yes. And you yeah. need someone else to like almost record what's being said, literally like physically recording it on like your audio. So you can re-listen to what happened because when you go into that state of shock, you don't remember, you don't know what's going on. And it's hard for you to even like communicate, like you freeze, yep. you get the fight, flight or freeze, you freeze in that moment. And that's what I did. I froze and I went to slow-mo and he walks out. And I remember I'm still sitting there on the crunch paper in the room alone. No one even said like, oh, you and I, I remember thinking like, well, I guess I should leave now. <laughs> so I got up and I went out to my truck and I just bawled my eyes out. What else do we do? It's scary, right? Cried my freaking eyes out, uh, drove home. And um, that was my first diagnosis of hypothyroidism in 2009. And little did I know that I was, that was going to be the beginning of battling like a complete shit show for the next seven years. So yeah. the way I describe it, like I went from sick to sicker to sickest over the next six to seven year, like time frame. I was struggling still with the extreme weakness and fatigue. It never went away. I, the extreme weakness and fatigue gave me panic attacks on the daily which, you know, it didn't help that I was living on coffee and energy drinks just to try to make it through the day, which also gives you anxiety and panic attacks. So it's that vicious. Oh, vicious. Yeah. And then your health and wellness and like gut health and all that is also like affected. But when you're only stomaching thing, yeah, it's, it's all, it's all. A show. Show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So I was like, as the years went on, I was collecting more and more symptoms. So it was like, then I had the bloating, then I was having constipation just from eating and eating in and of itself became a chore, like a nightmare. And I was like reacting to everything I ate. And I was, I counted, I had like up to seven food intolerances at some point. I, I had yeah. severe heart pain, heart palpitation, scary memory, scary memory loss. I, I was 10 second Tom. I literally thought I was convinced, I convinced myself I was at like early onset diet, like dementia. Literally, I was like, I'm fucked. I'm 39 and I'm already losing my memory. I had brain fog, depression. I mean, everything, everything everyone else battles, like I had it too. Yeah. And what pissed me off is like, none of this made sense because I thought I was doing everything right. You know, like yeah. this is such a huge thing that I talk to my clients about. It's like, I'm sitting here going, but I shifted to clean meats and I eat organic and I'm gluten-free and I'm dairy-free and I'm soy-free and I'm corn-free and I'm on top of everything. And I take a multivitamin that has 500 things in it and cost me $80 and I'm doing green smoothies every morning. But why, like, why am I still so sick? And it just, you know, like, it, it's so frustrating that you're like, I'm trying so hard, but it's still getting worse. It didn't compute. So just like anyone else in these situations, so desperate to recover my health, right? Because like, we remember what it's like to be good. Like we remember life before getting all these shitty symptoms, you know? And that's sort of like what haunts you in the whole thing is like, I you long 
for that person back, right? Yep. Yep. So <clears throat> I was like doctor hopping like crazy. Everything that we are all doing, I had like five different primaries, four different endos, two different functional medicine doctors, three different alternative medicine doctors. It was like, if this person couldn't help me, goodbye. What can you do? You can't help me, goodbye. What can you do? It was just that, you know, the hopping because you're like, someone's got to be able to help me. Well, also too, part of the problem is, and I, I've done it myself on my journey, but part of the problem with that hopping is, is not properly setting expectations. Well, one, they either might not know what they're doing um, with that or two, um, not giving it enough of a shot because sometimes it can be eight months, 12 months, two years of working with that one person to, or a couple different people, but in like a different team to get you better. So when you're hopping, it's kind of like, wait, you just want that immediate, make me feel better. <laughs> How does this work? So yeah. So what ended up happening? So when did you find, um, yeah. So by 2015, I, I couldn't do anything else. I was having panic, too many panic attacks at work. I was too fatigued. So I begged my doctor to take me out on um, disability. And he put me through all these horrible hoops, which I passed. And I took that last bit of little bit of shred of hope I had left. And I poured all my disability into one more doctor and she went crazy and was like pulling 15 vials on me at a time. And she's like, you have, you have, uh, Epstein-Barr and you're not absorbing your nutrients. And she dropped the second diagnosis bomb on me of you have Hashimoto's. And like, she was just like giving me all these answers. And her, her solution was literally shoving nutrients in my veins. Like here's some B12 shots. Here's some um, IVs, you know, multivitamin IVs and go be in the sauna. And that was it. That was her help. Here's a little bit of lysine monolaurin for one month. Okay. Are you better? You know, I did that for six months, $5,000 later. I was like, I can't do that. I literally physically can't afford this anymore. And like my heart, my emotions, I was like, I can't, I can't. I don't know what else to do. I had tried everything in my mind up until that point, everything that I knew of. Right. So I was, I was, I, I resolved to give up. I was made the conscious decision. Like I can't do this. I'm done. And if this thing is going to kill me, so be it. I'm done. Mm -hmm. And so I just basically laid in bed all day long, depressed because I was just, ready to die you don't know what to do yeah I yeah I don't know what to do so my brother okay my brother finally he served his ten. that's how long this this was right my brother had served his entire 10-year sentence and about you know six months the years are getting fuzzy now six months to a year after I'd resolved to like give up um he was finally released and long story short, he had a really hard time. He was diagnosed with Hashimoto's, hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's while he was in prison too. And I was his advocate for that as well. Um, so he not only had a hard time reacclimating to society because so much had changed from the time he was gone. Um, and he was still struggling with his health as well. And he really like faked it like got a girlfriend got a job he was doing really good and sadly he ended up turning back to drugs to cope with his low energy and that led to him having a run-in with the cops um three days before his 39th birthday and he ended up getting shot 14 times and dying in an suv on the side of a ditch of the road i'm so sorry to hear that that is awful Mm -hmm. it was but you know what honestly it was the best thing that ever happened to me mm -hmm. and I I can only say that now right and I'll tell you why so his sudden death like and he was my best friend ride or die like we had one of those crazy tight relationships brother sister relationships right his sudden death literally saved me because it jolted me awake out of my nightmare and it showed me how short and precious life truly is. Mm -hmm. And with this new perspective, I decided, oh my gosh, I was like looking at everything. And I was like, I, I'm done. Like I'm done with all of this. Mm -hmm. And I took my power back and I dropped three massive bombs, nuclear bombs on my life, I call them. 
And the first bomb I dropped was I decided to file for divorce mm -hmm. and that I was done being in a terribly abusive marriage to a narcissistic alcoholic. Mm -hmm. The next bomb I dropped was I was going to move out. <laughs> but since I didn't work anymore, I had no money. Yep. And so I started selling all my stuff. I sold my juicer. I sold my beach cruiser, my blender, and I saved up $500. And I was just texting like anyone in my contact list, like, Hey, can I move in with you? Yep. And this girl across the street was like, sure. I know. Mm -hmm. So I moved out across the street, <laughs> but I was so stuck because I was out. Yeah. And, oh, and look, that was a big, that's a major step. Yeah. It was. Yeah, I could see them out the window, which sucked, but it was a huge step. And the last bomb I dropped was I was, I enrolled in full-time college and I started working on my new degree in health and fitness. And That's then six months later, I ended up moving back home to San Diego. So great. I completely changed my entire life mm -hmm. on purpose. Yeah. And it really was the best thing that, that, and I will forever thank my brother for that. Mm -hmm. So, and, yeah. mm -hmm. so even yeah. though I was like a lot happier, like I really, like my energy got better. My depression went away. I had like a new lease on life. So I honestly like felt less symptoms, but yeah. I, I did still have significant symptoms like the memory loss, the bloating, yeah. um, sensitivity to heat, the, the anxiety, panic attacks, almost damn near killed me every day. And so I realized like, okay, there's still some stuff that's really, really wrong with me. What am I going to do? Mm -hmm. So in the middle of college, I'm, I'm studying two schools at this point, 60 hours a week. And I was like, okay, I, I found a program. You know how the universe likes to work. I was shown a program yeah. <laughs> that just happened to give me access to like any labs I wanted. Wow. And I was like a kid in the candy store. So I would get my grants my grant money once a semester from my colleges and I would just go testing happy on myself and I I didn't even know what I was doing I, I had no one helping me and I was just reading the test and going like let's do that one let's do that one I did this for about a year and I would just like just take study. one get the results back study it wow every time I got a test back and I would sit at my table and I would study what it was saying to me, it was like one small piece to my puzzle. And I remember I would just sit and I would weep with happiness because it was just so incredible to find out what I was desperately seeking, yeah. you know, answers. Yeah. Which is crazy because like you, uh, at that, like literally I've had worked with practitioners before who were like, oh, I've healed myself. Not quite in this way though. This is a total like, you literally were running tests on yourself and being like, what does the blood look like? Or what does, yeah. 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 Like I was getting full lab reports back and Googling every single, even if there was 70 things, like a full CBC where they test everything, I would Google and research every single thing and write down what it meant and then understand it in like, okay, how does this correlate to what my body's doing, the symptoms I'm presenting? Like I was literally researching and studying my own health. And then at the same time, because I'd moved back home, I actually found a new doctor. His, he was so cool. And his name was Dr. Cool. Like, I'm not kidding. It was so fun to work with him. So because of all the research I was doing with the answers that that previous doctor had given me, I was going to him too, to try to get some of it through my insurance. And I was like, Hey, can you run my full EBV panel? Hey, can you do this? And can you test my antibodies? And he was like doing just like kind of basic things for me where I was going crazy on my gut, my cortisol, adrenal, all kinds of things, my hair on my own. And so it was really awesome to have his support on that. Yeah. Um, not only in the beginning, but also like a few months later when I was, cause I was tracking them. And um, so I would be like, Hey, here's my base point to do all these like herbs, food, vitamins, minerals, energy work, all these things. And then like retest, how did it work? Right. It was amazing. Um, so I am proud to say that I actually reversed all of my symptoms and I yeah. unidentified myself from my diagnoses mm -hmm. all by myself. Yep. That's yeah. incredible. Like seriously, it's like, 
tragedy to what a turnaround and, and, Mm -hmm. and for having to know to keep going and to like keep fighting for your health. And like, I think you mentioned it before, like you knew what good felt like. So it's like that constant battle. And that's because uh, people have asked me too the same thing, like why? And I'm like, I just know what good feels like. And it's not, yeah. good. So I know I have to be able to get back there. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's now who, who do you work with now? Who are your current clients that, that you're helping? Right. So, I mean, obviously, because I was able to reverse hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's, that is my jam. So anyone with Graves, Hyper, Hypo, or Hashis, or a combination of any and all of them, which there's a lot of combinations, um, I coach. I, I, I do hone in on women specifically, but I know that this does, men have this as well. So you know, yep. I can help men just as well, just as much. Are some of those? So I've even heard of some, and like I think they thought I had Hashimoto's at one point too, but or Graves. I, I all of them. They're like yeah, I have right. disease, which is the great imitator. So it's like it it causes all sorts of issues like that everywhere. But um, so what? How would you describe what some of those are, and what some of the common symptoms are, and and when someone should look into? Yeah, we can get into all that. So yes, but <laughs> yeah. right, we'll start with what they are. <laughs> Okay, so hyper and graves, they swing upwards, okay? So people that are struggling from hyper or graves, they go very, um, they struggle putting weight on. Mm -hmm. They struggle with a lot of anxiety. They struggle with a lot of nervousness. It's like they're, and, and the reason why I say swing upwards is because when someone's hypo, their thyroid slows down. When someone's hyper, it's just like the hyper. They yep. they speed up. Their system speeds up. So they will experience a lot of hair loss, a lot of inability to gain weight. Those are the main ones. Some of them, there's a combination of Graves with TED, T-E-D, TED disease, which is like bulging eyes and yep. like puffy, like eye problems. So I've noticed that those tend to go hand in hand, but anyone with hyper or hypo can have a combination of Hashimoto diagnoses involved. You can have two at the same time and you can actually swing, you know, like if your medication is dosed too high, you can go into hyper and you can go into the anxiety and losing weight and all of that. If your medication is, if you're hyper, it is dose too much it can put you into hypo so Mm -hmm. there's sort of a lot of confusion on that right there but Hashimoto's is (laughs) it's like all three of these the hypo especially in Hashi's is like they struggle losing weight they struggle sleeping they have insomnia they struggle with moods they struggle with their periods um, as well as depression as well as nodules or um tons of panic attacks it's Mm -hmm. it's like any and every symptom that you could imagine could be lumped into at least hypo and hashis together is it all um thyroid dysfunction no Uh, (laughs) and that's that's one of the things that i found out (laughs) yeah yeah well because i've gone for all testing and i still don't understand but i I would go for testing and they'd be like your panels are normal your thyroid's normal your levels are normal and i was like there's clearly something not normal but yeah that's that's why so well that's the problem with the testing right is it's uncalibrated Mm -hmm. so what i mean by that is they created the tsh test which is what they used to diagnose women with in the 70s and even though in 2000, I think it was 2016, the um, like American Academy of, I forget their name all the way, you know, um, something that has to do with the thyroid, like a foundation that has to do with the thyroid that could like be a, considered a shot caller. Like mm-hmm. they made an official announcement to the public. Like I've read it saying these, this uh, testing range is way too big. Yep. And that the 4.5 range that, you know, the normal where it tops out, that is, that's the thyroid uh, level of like an 80 year old. Why wow. are we doing that? You know? And so there was supposed to be like a whole recall of the labs, like recalibrating their ranges 
to bring it to more of a narrow of like 0.5 to 2.5, but they never did that. Mm -hmm. And so the doctors just, they're overworked, they're slammed, and they just literally look at like the indicator on your lab. And if it says a little H for high, next to your your digit or the L for low, then they'll be like, oh, it's, it, it's out of range, you know? But if it's in that, if there's no, if it's not flagged and it's in that range, you're like, oh, you're fine. And that's the problem to begin with. So if women are having, or just any, women or men having um, some symptoms, they want to get testing, what should they ask their doctors to test for? So I just did a live on my page. You guys can go check this out. It's, um, it's, it's about antibodies. It's about TGO, TPO antibodies. So one of the things that I discovered, I have, I, during the whole process of reversing my 25 symptoms and undiagnosing myself, I discovered what I call the 10 root cause factors of thyroid illness. And the factors are first and foremost, pathogen infections then gut imbalances, then vitamin and mineral deficiencies, and then what I call your environment, and then medication effects. I don't ever call them side effects. I think that's stupid. They're effects, trap trauma, improper nutrition and malnourishment, toxic heavy metal overload, and spiritual depletions. So when a client hires me, the first thing that I want to know is if they have any current labs that I can look at is what their TGO and TPO antibodies are. Because one of the main root cause factors of any and all thyroid illnesses that I have discovered within myself and all of my clients is uh, underlying viral and bacterial infections. So we're talking Epstein-Barr, we're talking um, HPV, we're talking strep. And the majority of my clients, when I start digging on them, I'm like, did you have strep a lot as a child or even have your tonsils removed? They're like, yes. And I'm like, I know you did because <laughs> EBV and strep go hand in hand, which is really interesting too. So if they have one, they have the other. So mm -hmm. when I'm looking to, I, I call it the discovery phase. When I start working with my clients, it's like, I'm going to have, I have a doctor's letter that I give them. And I say, okay, I want you to take this to your doctor. And I want all these tests pulled or as many as I can. I, I have a little cute note where I'm like, hi, my name is Sarah. Your patient's working with me. I would like you to pull all these labs. Majority of doctors are really cool with it. So I run a full thyroid panel so I can get the TGO, TPO. I run a full EBV in infection panel. I look for CMV, I look for strep and any other infection markers that I can look for. And if they come back higher on their TPO and TGO antibodies, that's, that's, that's point number one of, okay, we're dealing with an infection. Now, what infection is it? Let's go dig. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll run herpes simplex one, herpes simplex two, and all of the EBV IgGs, which there's four panels for that. That right there, I can get a lot of uh, answers to their symptoms for them from. And then depending on the program they're in, I have the gut and thyroid restoration where I do a full 19 page gut analysis of all of every bacteria that exists in their body, or I do the hair tissue mineral analysis which tells me about all of the functions of their whole body. I can get a significant more answers right there. And then I take uh, the TGO antibodies, the pathogen, what I find their infections are, and I mix it with the other test results. And I can pretty much tell them <laughs> all of their answers from that. It's pretty phenomenal. I can, so that's why I do call myself and consider myself like a root cause, holistic root cause coach, because like, I know what it's like to be sick and want answers so you can have the guidance and direction to reverse your situation, not just have your time or money wasted. Yeah. You know? yeah. So because I had to go 10 years without any answers, like that is the first thing I start providing my clients is let's get some answers. Yeah. And, you know, I've just been divinely guided to these specific tests that it, it doesn't get any deeper than the tests I, I use. I, blood work is not ever the best course to be able to figure out what's wrong with you because our blood work, our blood's job is like a freeway, okay? It's a freeway and it carries, it carries things, it's carriers, right? So when we draw our blood, it's like a snapshot of what's in our blood at that moment. And 
our blood's job is it has to stay homeostatic, which means there has to be a proper balance of sodium, potassium, uh, whatever, your fat-soluble vi vitamins, your, your, your water-soluble nutrients, your, um, your immune system. That's, where, that's why you have antibodies in your bloodstream that come out on that test because your immune system is sick, sending those, those antibodies out. It's, they're, they're in your bloodstream and you pull a snapshot off that freeway of everything that's moving through your freeway or your bloodstream and you can see what's happening in your body at that second. So that's why blood doesn't work as like the end all be all of like, let me figure out what's wrong with me. Because if your blood does go swing out of balance, out of that homeostasis, you can die. So that's why we go through the hair. That's why we go through the stool. And that'll give us more of like a three month analysis of what's really going on deeper within you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, what are some of the programs you had? You mentioned like a gut protocol, but, um, and I know it depends on everybody, but how long are your typical programs working with you? It does. It, it definitely does depend on the person and what they're looking for, because I mean, I'll work with someone as long as they want, but yeah. I feel like a good starter, like a good starting point to get answers start implementing the protocols and the changes to your life and your lifestyle that need to be done based on your test results, a good solid four months. I mean, I can, I kind of have bragging rights to say like within three to four months, I can reverse, if not de decrease half or more of all of my clients' um, problems. It's just, I've been doing it for four years now. I got it down to a science and my clients get fantastic results because that's what I desire to provide, right? I feel like women, and this is a total side note, like women are the fabric of society. We are the reason why everything functions. Our families, our schools, our baseball teams, our churches. And when we're not doing good, no one else is doing good. Yeah. Yep. Right? So I try, I, I'm not here to waste anyone's time. It's like, let's dive in deep and figure out what's going on. And I'm, I'm going to give you a individualized protocol with exactly the supplements you need. We're going to find out exactly the gut infections you have, exactly the bacteria you're missing. We're going to put you on the foods you need. We're going to put you on the probiotics you need. We're going to put you on the antivirals you need. And we're going to start making a difference immediately. Yep. And, you know, so a lot of my, my clients, like they have the same attitude as I do. And it's such a beautiful relationship because they they match my, my work and my effort with their, their effort. And because of the beautiful, um, combination of, uh, of attention, love, care, and effort, they get the results they need really fast. So I, I like to work with my clients for at least four to six months in the gut, in the, in my gut and thyroid restoration program, so that we have a solid amount of time to fight the gut infections with which everyone has. Okay. Like it or not, you don't know it, but you have some sort of a gut infection. You just do because we've been inundated with antibiotics. Um, not only like literally orally from our doctors, right. But we've been inundated with antibiotics through our food system, right. Every time you go eat a hamburger in and out, you're eating antibiotics. You don't realize it. We've also been inundated with antimicrobial, everything, hand sanitizer, bleach wipes, you know, and everyone's gut microbiome from what I've seen with my own eyes doing 21 gut tests over the last two years now is there the, the majority of everyone is in a depleted state of their good bacteria and need to work on it significantly. Yep. Yeah. So once we get a solid um, rebuild or remodel of the gut, then I like to move them. If they want to continue, then I like to move them into the hair tissue mineral analysis. So we go a little deeper. That one takes me deep into the, I don't even use like thyroid panels. I don't go to the doctors anymore and test my thyroid. I use the hair tissue mineral analysis because I can get such an accurate report on what my thyroid's doing from that, that that's how I, that's how I treat my thyroid, like, and maintain my thyroid. It also tells me exactly the state of adrenal burnout that my client is in tells me their um, insulin and blood sugar imbalances, which a lot of people have and don't even know it. Um, copper toxicity is crazy for women too, because um, which a lot of the women that are on antidepressants and have the significant mood swings and the depression, the anxiety, that's very much could be connected to a copper toxicity 
And if like anyone's been on birth control, like I was on birth control for 15 years, I was super copper toxic. There's a, a lot of like ways we're getting tox like toxic amounts of copper infused into our bodies that really uh, mess with our emotions and our emotional stability. Um, and so we work on depleting or um, decreasing like aluminum, mercury, arsenic, lead, and all the toxic heavy metals that really impede like memory, brain fog, and uh, rebalancing the minerals. And between these two programs, it's like you can literally turn into a whole new woman, not only like in your health, but like in your whole outlook in life as well. It's amazing. Yeah, it is. It is. And it's, it's so funny because it is, it's not funny, but it is all related. Like it just, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's nuts as you start to feel better. Like I, I remember even for me, same thing happened where after like six months of working with a practitioner and herbal supplements, and I don't even think I was doing any crazy diet or exercise at that point, but my body started to function properly. And I was like, oh, my hormones balanced out every, like, I was like, just working on gut health alone. Mm -hmm. It was like, wait a minute. And when you say infection, it's almost just like imbalance is another good way to say it. Like you're, everything's out of balance because there's good and bad bacteria and or mm -hmm. one of the doctors for me called them good and bad bugs. And it's just that stuff gets out of whack and where there's more bad than good. And so mm -hmm. you can throw all your systems out of out of place. So what's your biggest piece of advice for people when they're on, whether it's in life or in a healing journey? Don't fall for the rhetoric of my body's attacking itself or I have an autoimmune and I'm going to be sick for life. Yep. Yep. Because yep. it's not, it doesn't have to be that way. Yep. If yep. you decide mm -hmm. that it doesn't have to be that way and you refuse that reality, then you will be guided to the steps you need to take in order to find the right person to help you to get the answers to restore your health and that will just naturally fade away. You know, a lot of people come to me and they're like, oh, I have an autoimmune. I'm like, so yeah. if I reverse an autoimmune and I didn't believe in it and I still don't believe it, why do you have to like, you just borrow my faith for a second. Yeah. You know? And so I, um, it, it, it's different. I'm, you know, that's one of the things that sets me apart from a lot of other thyroid coaches, but I just don't, I don't believe it. Nope. Nope. No. And that's, no, I love that advice. And that's actually, I had somebody tell me that once too, because I walked in and of course, after seeing 20 plus doctors, I'm like, well, I have Lyme, I have this. And they were like, stop calling yourself sick. And I was like, you're so right. <laughs> that's, Thank you. I, actually, yeah. That leads me to a question though, of like, because I feel like we're seeking out a diagnosis or seeking out like, what is wrong with my body? What's going on? And we almost need that answer. Do you ever find that people kind of get stuck in that answer though? It's like, you have Hashimoto's and you have these graves or whatever. And do you find that people get stuck in the sick mode as an excuse almost to not make the lifestyle changes or, um, cause that's just out of curiosity. Cause I, step one for me was definitely like, I want to find out what's wrong with me, but then it's kind of like, does it even matter what's wrong? It's more like, wait, let's figure out what's going on with their body so we can address it. But what do you have to say about that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, thank you. That That's a, such a good point. One of the things I teach my, I, I do so much more than just testing and protocols, right? I'm more like a life coach, spiritual coach, because I know that whole body, everything trapped, trauma, spiritual sickness, everything goes into recovering your health. So if my clients try to talk to me like mine, my hypothyroidism, my Hashimoto's, I'm like, uh-uh, that's not yours. Mm -hmm. And then I'll push it back on them. They'll be like, is that really what you want to claim? Is it? Mm -hmm. And they'll be like, Ooh, no, I don't know. And I'm like, careful what you say. And I had to start on, that's how I've unidentified myself with these diagnoses as well. It's like, so how can you say it instead? You can say like, okay, I've been diagnosed with like the, or just hypothyroid or, you know, like, I don't know, some try to leave the word I out of it and claim it. Don't claim it as your identity because yeah, it is very easy. Cause like I was stuck in that identity. I was stuck in that victim mode. And a lot of people do get trapped in that and they, they enjoy having an excuse to not do much 
or I don't know. I mean, it's very hard. It's very rare that I come across that because I very much attract the women that are not like that. Yes. Um, so in my world, this doesn't exist. And mm -hmm. if they try to come in and, and act like that, I tell them really fast and they're like, Oh, you're right. And they, they switch. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I've been in like 27,000 large Facebook groups and I've, I've seen that. I have seen that victim mode and it's like, they don't want to accept the help. And it's really sad. Yeah. Um, I don't, you know, hopefully at some point they will. And it, and just understanding we can heal ourselves. Like it's understanding yeah. like, wait, I do have the power to, to do but this. One of the things I also am now teaching my clients as well as like these diagnoses guys, like they're based on theories. Okay. They're literally theories. And these mm -hmm. names, Hashimoto's are people yeah. that theorized the discovery of these things hundreds of years ago okay like these names are from like the early 18 1900s mm -hmm. and there is no more research to back this because it is specifically a closed door Hashimoto's thyroid it it's closed it's a closed door scientific situation why would they close the door on any research moving forward mm -hmm. why would we have testing from the 70s you got to start asking yourself these things. Why do I want to claim, you know, a diagnosis from a guy from freaking 1900? Yeah. You got to start diving into the history of things. And then, you know, so what I teach my clients is like, no, you don't have Hashimoto's, honey. You have a massive Epstein-Barr infection. No, sweetheart, you don't, you don't have hypothyroidism. You literally have a depletion of your calcium, of your magnesium of your sodium, you know, all of the main minerals that you need to digest your food to have good glandular function. And you have C. diff, which is giving you possibly like diarrhea and inconsistent bowel movement issues. So let's literally take the test results and, lo and look at it and realize this is not a diagnosis. These are things that we can fix. Mm -hmm. So don't claim it as your identity. Yep. And it just makes sense at that point. Yeah, one hundred percent. It does. It does. Mm -hmm. I just, I just want to thank you so much for coming on here and being so vulnerable and <laughs> sharing your incredible story. And I, I just am so grateful to have met you and be able. I know there's so much more we can go over too, and that's where we can do some mini series or something because I, I, there's so much here in this topic, um, mm -hmm. and that's why. But for podcast sake, I know we fit it back down into an hour. But um, is there anything that you want to finish with that we haven't covered today that you did want to get across? Yeah. So I want everyone to know that I have a wonderful worldwide online community. It's called the Butterfly Gang. And in my gang, I am teaching the 10 root cause factors of thyroid illness. I, I come live and I teach the lesson, but obviously people work and they have different lives and we're on different time zones. So I do have a video vault where I post all the replays. I'm just now starting the fifth root cause illness medication effects. And yeah. so I would love for you guys to join because of my situation. I was so isolated and lonely on my journey that I don't want anyone else to feel isolated or, or lonely or feel like they have no one to turn to or talk to. Cause I, I trust me, it happened to me too. So we have monthly support groups, support calls, um, where we show up and it's like meet and greet, but you can also share something that's, you know, you're going through and you can make friends and I'm there to support you. And then you can, right now, if you join, you can binge on all of the replays. And then the rest of the year, I'm going to be finishing out um, the, the root cause series. It's a fabulous place. I love it so much. I have resources. I post um, tons of podcast meditations. Like it's just loaded, loaded That's, with things. Yeah. Oh my God. That's, it sounds incredible. I actually didn't even know about that group. I'm like, Oh, okay. I love that. And it's just what people need. It's resources, support, like yeah. answers, yeah. resources, support. Yep. Yep. 100. Yeah. So no, thank you for sharing that. And we'll have that in the show notes as well too. So people will be able to access. For, yeah. If you're 
if you're listening in here. So yeah, if um, they come to my Instagram as well, it's in my bio and they can check out all the links if they wanted to book a discovery call or I have what's called a 50, um, I have an advice call, which is a $50 um, like starter call with a, I call like a miniature starter protocol that can like get the ball rolling if they can't work with me, like in one of my bigger programs one-on-one. -on -one. So I have all this, uh, I also have a podcast, Thursday Thyroid Talks. And so all the great resources that you guys would need to see, like what's in my world for you is in the link in my bio on either TikTok or Instagram. But yeah, I'll hook you up with like yeah. links and stuff too. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's all. Yeah, I want to put that all out there. But I just, I, you have an incredible story and journey and your positivity and just who you are. It, it just is a testament to who you are, I should say. But I just want to thank you so, so much for thank you. sharing. Um, yes, my pleasure. Thank you for giving me this space to share. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you so much for taking another holistic view of your health with us. I hope you've really enjoyed today's discussion and as always, take control of your own wellness journey by exploring the practitioners and modalities available near you or on our directory at www.holistichealthcollab.com. Don't forget to subscribe here so you don't miss an episode and you can also find more holistic health tidbits at Holistic Health Collab on Instagram. Please leave a rating and review to help us reach more people that might need to hear this information. If you have any questions about today's show or any ideas for future episodes, or if you just want to reach out, you can contact me directly, Kate Mazelski at kate at holistichealthcollab.com. You can just put podcasts in your subject line. Again, thank you so much, and I hope you have a great day.